Good morning, afternoon or evening to everyone, uh, wherever you are. Thanks for joining this uh, virtual session. My name is uh, Samuel Ortiz, and today I'm going to talk about virtualization for the cloud native uh, ecosystem and how we're trying uh, with the two projects, Kata Containers 2.0 and Cloud Hypervisor. We're trying to make hardware virtualization a cheap commodity for uh, cloud native. I work for Intel, um, and I actually work on those two projects, Kata Containers 2.0 and uh, well, Kata Containers and and Cloud Hypervisor. Uh, so before going into uh, description of what Kata 2.0 is uh, and how this mix uh, this combines together with the uh, Cloud Advisor, let me uh, quickly and. Uh, hopefully very quickly a recap how a container is actually managed and launched uh, with uh, Kubernetes so that we can see uh, how, how Kata containers plays in that picture. So on any given node, you have a Kubelet agent, and this agent talks to a CRI runtime uh, through the CRI specification. So typically, uh, CRI runtimes, uh, it's either Continuity or Cryo. And then the CRI runtime will um, call into an actual container runtime. And through the runtime class, uh, you can specify which runtime you want to use. Um, most of the time, and by default, uh, people will call into RunC, the, uh, the regular OCI um, uh, standard runtime. And what RunC is going to do is creating a container, uh, well, actually a pod. Uh, hosting here in that example a couple of containers, a couple of workloads uh, that are uh, isolated from the rest of the system through namespaces, um, and that forms the pod. Now, when we look at Kata containers, and I want to I want to describe this so that we uh, we understand what we're doing with uh, Kata 2.0 and Cloud Advisor. Uh, now, when you look at Kata containers, it's very similar in some ways and and quite different in other ways. You still have a Kubelet agent calling into Continuity or Cryo uh, through CRI. But then, uh, and thanks to the uh, runtime class specification, which is part of the, uh, of the pod specification, uh, you can tell your CRI runtime which container runtime you want to use. Um, you, can, you can tell it to use RunC, or you can tell it to use uh, Kata Containers. And Kata Containers are, as a runtime, um, instead of creating a process running on the host uh, or a few processes running on host that make the pod, uh, Kata Containers will use hardware virtualization as a container isolation um, uh, layer. So what it will do is calling into an hypervisor or VMM and create a virtual machine where the uh, pod is going to run. And the pod is going to manage, is going to be managed by uh, a specific agent inside the virtual machine called the Kata agent. And as you can see here, um, the pod is going to run uh, its own uh, pod Linux kernel because uh, the, the virtual machine that Kata Containers launches is a full Linux, um, Linux guest OS. So when you look at this, um, there are quite a few components here that are very specific to Kata Containers. Uh, we have an agent, we have an hypervisor, we have a Linux guest kernel, we have a Kata runtime uh, that is different from RunC. Uh, and all those components uh, add together and, well, they create some overhead. So you launch a virtual machine and that has its own overhead. And inside this virtual machine, you run a Kata agent that adds to the overhead, uh, memory overhead, uh, but also boot time, uh, latency additions and overhead. Um, you had complexity compared to, to the RunC setup. Uh, you have more uh, components that are running with, with Kata Containers. You have, a, you have a virtual machine. You have a, a few components running inside the virtual machine. You have an additional protocol between the Kata runtime and the Kata agent inside the virtual machine to communicate through. Uh, so that's, that adds up uh, in terms of complexity. And uh, you also have some uh, compatibility issues, potentially. Um, the whole cloud native ecosystem is designed around the assumption that a container is going to be a process running on the host. But here with Kata Containers, we are building a complete virtual machine. Uh, 
where the container workloads and the pod workloads are going to be running. So you, you're you going to have some issues trying to be compatible with all the specifications that are designed for running processes on the host. So what we're doing with Kata containers and what we're trying to improve in some cases incrementally, in some cases much more than incrementally, with Kata containers 2.0 and Cloud Advisor is to reduce the overhead, the complexity, and make the whole Kata containers um, uh, implementation fully compatible with uh, with Kubernetes. While doing this, we're trying to uh, keep the Kata containers security promises, which is mostly around security. We want to use hardware virtualization as a, as an isolation layer, and this is for having a stronger isolation layer than uh, the existing ones. Okay, so. What we did uh, with Kata Containers 2.0 uh, is improving and working on many of the components that are specific to Kata Containers. Uh, one of them, as I mentioned, is the uh, Kata Agent. This is an agent running on the virtual machine um, that manages the pod and the, and the pod workloads in the virtual machine. And it communicates through uh, a specific protocol, typically through a, a Vertio VSOC socket. Um, that communicates back to the uh, to the Kata runtime, and the Kata agent basically you can you can see it as a reduced version of RunC, much reduced version of RunC running inside the virtual machine, and managing the pod and the uh, and the pod workloads. So what we observed um, with uh, the Kata agent is that it was consuming. Um, about 10 megabytes of memory. So each and every pod that you launch uh, includes a Kata agent, and that Kata agent was consuming 10 megabytes of physical memory from the host. So that's 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 quite a bit of overhead that you induce with the with the with the agent. So we did two things. Um, we re-implemented um, Kata in Rust from Go. The Kata agent, sorry, in Rust from Go. And we also switch from a gRPC to TTRPC. And when combining those two together, um, we significantly reduce the memory overhead that uh, the Kata agent um, added to the uh, to the Kata Containers project, from roughly 10 megabytes to something between one and two megabytes. So, with that new implementation of the Kata agent, you save about 80% of the of the agent memory footprint. So that's that's uh, a significant improvement. Uh, we also simplified the uh, the protocol between the uh, the agent and the and the CLI runtime uh, to make it easier to maintain and also easier to understand, easier to extend as well if we ever need to. Uh, we took our lessons from uh, from Kata 1.x uh, and understood what is really needed uh, as a protocol between uh, the the host and the Kata agent, and we kind of work on that and make it uh, simpler. Another component that we looked at is uh, the virtualization layer, uh, the hypervisor. Um, but here in that case, uh, for the uh, hypervisor that, that are supported a VMM, uh, a virtual, uh, virtual machine manager on top of KVM. Um, and actually, one year back, uh, Together with Andrea Florescu from AWS, uh, we presented what we thought would be a cloud-native hypervisor, what we thought would be uh, a, a, a VMM uh, specifically crafted and designed for the cloud-native ecosystem. And we look at the CRI specification, and we basically map that uh, down to a set of hardware virtualization features. And the, the boxes on the right are the boxes that your hypervisor or your VMM should implement to support the entire CRI specification. And I was, I was mentioning the incompatibility issues that you may have when running um, pods inside a virtual machine, and that is, that is one, one of them here. You need to have a VMM that supports a bunch of uh, specific order virtualization features to support the entire CRI specs. Otherwise, you kind of um, you won't be able to support all of it. Uh, 
So we work on this. Uh, we work on a, a, a new VMM uh, called Cloud Hypervisor, which runs on top of KVM, and which is based on the uh, upstream Rust VMM project. And Cloud Hypervisor is implementing the full uh, CRI specification. Uh, it, it basically implements the, the entire set of hardware, virtual IP, uh, hardware virtualization features that I just highlighted. And that allows us to support uh, entirely the, uh, the CRI specification. Uh, QMU is another uh, VMM that, cloud, uh, that Kata Containers supports and that, that basically provides the full CRI support. Uh, but the difference between Cloud Advisor and one of the main difference between Cloud Advisor and QMU is the, the language that, is, that it is implemented in. Um, cloud Advisor is implemented in Rust, whereas a QMU is implemented in C. Rust being um, arguably one of the safest uh, system programming languages out there. And last but not least, Cloud Advisor is uh, pretty fast. So the, uh, uh, the boot latency are quite reduced uh, with or, or minimized with the Cloud Advisor. And the memory footprint, uh, which is typically under um, 10 megabytes per, per VMM with, uh, with Cloud Advisor. Um, so another um, aspect that we looked at with, uh, with Kata Container Studio Zero uh, is uh, observability. And what we realized is that in order to deploy Kata Container at scale and at a la very large scale, you need to have a very solid way of gathering uh, events and metrics. And with Kata 1.x, uh, we were missing um, quite a few of them, um, but we, all, we were also missing a seamless integration with the existing tools like uh, Prometheus. And uh, with Kata Container Studio Zero, we are making sure that there's a seamless integration with Prometheus, but also that we now provide a, a much more complete set of uh, metrics from the Kata Containers uh, components to, uh, to whoever is uh, gathering those metrics from, uh, from Prometheus. So what we added is a uh, Kata Monitor component. And here it, it may not be uh, super clear in that diagram, but there's one uh, Kata Monitor uh, component per node. And that Kata Monitor um, uh, daemon basically monitors the entire set of uh, Kata containers running on, on your node. And that's uh, that Kata Monitor um, implementation uh, integrates seamlessly with Prometheus, as I said. And it provides a, a very interesting set of uh, metrics from the hypervisor itself, so from the, the whole virtualization layer. From the agent, uh, we get metrics from the agent as well. And from the virtual machine, um, uh, from the guests running inside the virtual machine as well. Another interesting uh, feature that we added as part of the, uh, of the Kata Containers project is uh, pod overhead which allows us to uh, specify uh, through the runtime, if your runtime class supports the pod overhead feature, you can specify how much uh, a pod uh, is gonna add into your uh, memory and CPU uh, consumption so that you can get a more realistic um, uh, measurement of the, uh, of the uh, resources consumption that your, uh, that your uh, Kata containers are, are consuming. Okay. Um, another uh, very interesting uh, aspect of what we're, what we're, another interesting feature that is going to be landing in Kata Containers to Zero eventually is how we um, fetch uh, the container images. So typically today, the way uh, container images are handled through Kata Containers is that you pull the container images from the host and you expose that container image into the virtual machine because you need to run the pod inside the virtual machine. So obviously your virtual machine needs to have access to this, uh, to this container image. So we expose the uh, container image through typically Vertio. It could be Vertio FS, um, uh, one of the uh, latest Vertio specific, uh, specification edition. Uh, could be the legacy 9P uh, protocol, or it could be something like Vertio block. But basically, your host is fetching the image, is managing the images, and then you expose that image uh, or those images into the virtual machine. And what we do with, uh, what we are planning to do with the Kata Containers to the Zero is to have an optional way uh, to optionally be able to uh, 
uh, fetch the container images from inside the virtual machine. So that sounds uh, that sounds quite a, like a, a pretty big change, and it, it it is one. But the idea behind all this, uh, behind pulling images from the pod, is to basically extend um, the Kata container thread model. We want to extend it to the point where, as a tenant, you no longer have to trust your CSP. You no longer have to trust your host. You can basically say, I'm running my workload inside a virtual machine. And when you combine this with uh, technologies like uh, total memory encryption um, that are available to, to virtual machines on, on many architectures, uh, you can basically ensure that your host no longer sees what your uh, container is running, no longer see what your the, the memory that your container is consuming. And now if you can also pull the images directly from the virtual machine, you can guarantee that your um, that your host, that your CSP is no longer seeing what your uh, container is actually running. So we want to extend the, the thread model of Kata containers to where it is today, to the point where it can also protect the uh, container workloads from the CSP itself which is quite a, um, an interesting and also um, uh, interesting from a business perspective and from a technology perspective as well. Interesting features. Um, another feature uh, that we're working on with um, Kata Containers 2.0 and Cloud Advisor is the way um, the container, uh, the CRI runtime, and the Kata containers uh, runtime interact together. Um, it, I, I wouldn't say by default because this is this is already partly the case uh, with Kata containers 1.x. But in some cases with uh, with uh, Kata containers uh, 1.x, uh, you may end up with this specific uh, architecture. So when you launch a Kata container, the Kata container runtime launches the VM. Yeah, the link between the, uh, the the virtual machine and the CRI runtime is done through um, a set of components, uh, a container D shim, uh, or a, a, a container runtime shim, and the Kata container shim. And you basically have a, a pair of shims for each and every process, each and every container that you run inside your pod. So the bigger your pod is, the bigger your uh, process overhead, and the bigger your complexity on the host, is going to be you're going to be adding up a lot of shims, a lot of pair of shims in your host. What we did is is work with the uh, um, uh, CRI runtime maintainers, the Container D1 and the Cryo One, to move to a much simpler architecture and a more, much more scalable architecture. Um, we work on a, a, a runtime shim API uh, called Runtime Shim API v2 that allows us to have one. Um, Long-standing daemon for Kata containers, the Kata Shim V2, and basically having it allows us to have one running daemon for uh, a pod, so one single pod, one single de single daemon per pod instead of uh, n per containers inside a pod. So that's a much more scalable architecture. Uh, it's also a much more, um, uh, much less complex architecture. Um, Docker, uh, the Docker CLI, Podman. Kubernetes um, all can be interacted with through this runtime shim API. So with Kata Containers uh, 2.0, we're going to be going um, shim v2 all the way. Uh, we're going to be using shim v2 all the way uh, and, and switching to the shim v2 API exclusively. Um, so we will have one single Kata process per pod. Um, much simpler, and also it provides a better security because you don't need to monitor that many processes anymore. Um, and it also simplifies even further because, well, we can basically get rid of the um, Kata container CLI support, uh, which is a fairly complex um, overlay support in, in, on top of Kata container to support the um, the OCI CLI uh, specification, uh, your Docker run, Docker stop, Docker exec, and so on. Now with the Kata container, with the with the run, um, the runtime Shim v2 API, this can go, can, this can all get read off and um, get things much more simpler, much simpler. Okay, and I'm done with this presentation. Um, this is uh, the set of Kata containers 2.0 and
Also combined with, uh, with Cloud Advisor as a VMM, uh, we're planning to move forward the, uh, the virtualization support in the cloud native ecosystem and make it uh, even more seamless, uh, much lighter and m much more transparent than, than it is today. Thanks a lot for your attention and I'm now ready to take any further questions. Um, so I was saying. generate your own uh, virtual machine image, your own kernel, um, and then, well, basically do pretty much what you want on the guest. Um, it has to be a fairly recent kernel. The word is there. It's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, it's fairly complete. Um, uh, probably not as complete as the x 6 one, but it's. It's there. Um, next question on the slides. There are a few questions on about the slides. Uh, Overall overhead on average. Photo video engineer. I hope this is better. You can hear me now. Hello. Okay, apparently uh, the audio is much better. So um, very quickly on the on the first question is is about the uh, the option to change the, the the virtual machine that hosts the container. Then the answer is yes, you can you can change it. The guest that's running the container, uh, pretty much as much as you want. Uh, ARM sixty there. 
uh, it's and it's uh, it's it's CI tested. There are um, a norm 64 uh, a norm 64 CI infrastructure that's been provided by the ARM community. Uh, next question that I'm going to take uh, slides. Slides are available. Um, I just uploaded them to to the website, so you can go and and take them from there. Uh, what's the um, and I have a couple of questions on the uh, overhead on average. Um, there's no, it's it's a hard word to answer because it's it it highly depends on the uh, on the kind of uh, workload that you're running. Uh, it, it depends on on the, how big of a memory footprint it it, it takes. Uh, it it depends memory bound it is. Um, ideal case is a is a regular size workload uh, that is CPU bound. Uh, typically when the, when a workload is is really much CPU bound, the uh, the, the virtualization overhead is is fairly minimal. Um, if it's I/O bound, if your workload is very much I/O bound, uh, I advise you to go and play with several uh, uh, I/O virtualization of, uh, options. Um, Vertio is one of them. Uh, as for example, with uh, uh, Cloud Provisor and QMU, which are, are two of the main, two of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, hypervisor that uh, Cloud uh, that Kata Container supports, uh, we now have uh, IO U-ring support, which gives a, a much better Vertio throughput. In case you need uh, really native uh, native performance, latency, and throughput uh, on the IO side of things. Um, Probably you want to look at uh, device pass-through, and that's something that that uh, Kata Container supports. But it's as I said, it's 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 quite difficult to answer that uh, on average because it it highly depends on the on the uh, on the kind of workload that you're running. Um, it also depends on the on the uh, hypervisor that you're running. The hypervisor adds up to the uh, to the overhead. Um, so depending on 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 the workload, you might want to use a one hypervisor or the other, um, or others. Uh, more questions. Let me take slides. Other uh, okay. Another question. Other infrastructure container inside a pod, which end up inside the VM boundaries, for example, sidecar. Is this a problem for the trust model, especially in some of the future future model where the CSP is untrusted? Um, infrastructure con. Oh, another question. Sorry, this is jumping up. Oh, I know. Sorry. I'm going to take that one first. Okay, let me re repeat the question. Are there infrastructure container inside a pod, which end up inside the VM boundary, for example, sidecars? Is this a problem for the trust model, especially in some of the future modes, confidential computing, where the CSP is untrusted? Um, I guess this could be this could be an issue, especially. Um, uh, for things like confidential computing, definitely. Uh, when the CSP is entrusted, you probably don't want to run something, something from the CSP inside the uh, the uh, Kata container uh, security boundary. I guess um, I don't really have an answer for this. Uh, a lot of people have been looking at this and running sidecar outside of the uh, of the virtual machine uh, boundary. And and uh, yes, it is it is a problem for the uh, for the uh, for the current trust model, I don't think this is uh, this is really a problem for the uh, for the future for well not future one because it it it's going to be an optional one but for the uh, quote unquote confidential computing trust model, it is going to be a, it is going to be a problem and you you really want to uh, move that uh, those infrastructure container outside of the uh, of the VM boundary. I guess th there's going to be some limitation there. Uh, obviously. Uh, you won't be able to let your CSP see anything and everything that you do, and you 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 may be lo you may be losing some of the uh, 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 metrics, for example, uh, on what's happening inside a virtual machine. Actually, you, you may be losing uh, quite a bit of them. Um, but I guess this is this is kind of the uh, there's always a price that you pay for security, and I I guess this could be a, this this could be seen as as, as one of them. Uh, another question. Container without compromising security. Uh, yes, it it does allow for running as root or non-root or anything that you uh, typically do in a in a in a container. Um, 
I would say that basically running root inside a CADA container is as secure as running root inside a virtual machine. So don't don't uh, don't be confused. I'm not saying this is more secure or uh, or less secure than running uh, in a in a uh, bare metal container. It's just that you're basically running as root uh, on VMX non-root, which means that you're uh, protected by the by the hardware virtualization. So I would say that yes, this, this is as secure as running uh, um, root inside a classic legacy uh, virtual machine. Uh, another question, I think I only have a few minutes left. Uh, is CADA 2.0 already available or still in development? Uh, CADA 2.0 is available, it, it's both. It's, uh, it's still in development. Um, uh, so there's a, um, I, can, I can put a link there. I will, I will put a link in the answer box, but uh, really quickly to, to answer this, uh, CADA 2.0 is a work in progress. Um, the, uh, the, the stable and production ready version of CADA is still uh, 1.x, uh, but 2.0 is where uh, most is where the, the, the CADA continuous community is trying to shift uh, its efforts, its uh, development efforts. So it's it's going, it's, it's making a, a very good progress, and it's already usable, I would say. Um, I, we can certainly not claim that it's that it's production ready, but it's something. Uh, you can go and, and build it yourself. Uh, there's, there are packages for it, uh, as far as, uh, uh, as I know, and, and you, can, you can try, you can start uh, playing with it. So it's still in development, um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's available for, uh, um, for early consumption, I would say. Okay, uh, more questions. Regarding Cloud Advisor, what about Firecracker? Um, use case to have two separate projects. Um, Cloud Advisor and Firecracker share a lot of uh, a lot of code. Uh, they're they're both consuming um, uh, an upstream project called Rust VMM. Uh, Rust VMM is a is, is basically a set of uh, a virtualization crates that uh, Firecracker and Cloud Advisor are using. Um, and the uh, so they're they're sharing quite a bit of code. Uh, they're they're basically aiming at, at different use cases. Um, I think Firecracker is uh, simpler and smaller. Um, it, uh, the, the, the simplicity and, and the simplicity comes with restrictions. The things that you cannot do with Firecracker uh, for, not because uh, there, there are technical reasons for, for not implementing that in Firecracker, uh, but it's, it's basically because the Firecracker community uh, doesn't see a um, reason why implementing those features like, for example, uh, device pass-through or host file system sharing, and that um, that creates limitation on on what kind of, uh, of Kubernetes workloads you can support. Uh, so if you have to do a, a, a few workarounds to support um, as much as many as many workloads as you would with Cloud Advisor, uh, Cloud Advisor uh, does support uh, a device pass-through. Uh, it does support host. Um, hosts uh, file system sharing, and basically it supports uh, the entire um, uh, CRI uh, spec. So there are um, the use cases for, for both. Uh, if you want something uh, very slim and simple, uh, you probably want to look at Firecracker, uh, but you need to know what kind of restrictions uh, you're going to have to to support. Uh, what type of uh, what type of VM image is used? What hypervisor is used? So the hypervisor, there are two hypervisors today that are used, Acorn and KVM. Um, and uh, Acorn is, a, is an hypervisor on its own. Uh, KVM is, uh, uh, the, I would say, uh, most widely used uh, Linux hypervisor. And on top of KVM, uh, then you uh, can continue supports uh, VMM, uh, like Cloud Advisor, Firecracker, QMU. They all run on top of KVM. Uh, so basically, the two underlying hypervisor are uh, KVM and Acorn, and on top of KVM, you can select what kind of VMM you want to use, depending on the, uh, again, the, the kind of workload you want to you want to use with Kubernetes. QMU and CloudVisor support the entire CRI spec, and things like Firecracker comes with uh, uh, some some limitation on what kind of uh, uh, part of the spec they support. Uh, more questions? Let me check. 
Isn't VM a higher cost to pay for the trust boundary? Um, well, it depends on it depends on what you want to do. Uh, so the question is: Isn't a virt are, aren't virtual machine a higher cost to pay for the trust boundary? Um, virtual machine. People think about virtual machine as something very expensive and, and very costly. Uh, I think with Gala containers, we're showing that uh, virtual, the, the virtual machine overhead is definitely not as, as high and, and, and large as people think. Uh, we boot a, a, a Kata containers uh, with QMU or Firecracker or Cloudvisor in typically less than, than uh, one second in the, in the worst case. Uh, the, uh, the memory overhead is, is, can be very small depending on the workload. So I, I think the, there is a cost. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying there isn't a cost. But if you're looking for um, um, having this uh, additional uh, isolation layer based on the hardware uh, and, and using hardware virtualization, I think this is the kind of cost that, that you're willing to pay. So what we're seeing is that, uh, uh, yeah, that, that would be my last question. Uh, we're running out of time. But what, what we're seeing is that um, people running in production uh, Kata containers, they, uh, uh, they run Kata containers for very uh, specific security reasons. They want to they wanna run uh, multi Kubernetes, multi hard merge tendency, and they see Kata containers as uh, a very good way to implement this, uh, answering another question here. But yes, it, it's, if you're looking at this kind of, this kind of use cases where you, you want to have uh, this uh, additional layer, layer of security, this is typically the kind of thing to pay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. Um, and you can find me on Slack. Uh, you can drop me an email if you have, uh, if you have more questions. This is, this is kind of weird to answer uh, all these questions without feedback from the audience. I hope I didn't do uh, too much of a, of a bad job at it. Uh, thanks a lot for attending. Um, Hope to see, uh, to see you live or maybe virtual uh, again soon. Thank you.